Hello and welcome to Access. My guest today is Roy Staub, and Roy is an environmental sculptor. An icon's a good word. Yeah. Okay. But, or a magic figure. But I, I, I don't believe in magic, believe me. Okay, but you, you travel around the country. And, and I, I, tra I travel around the world. You, you travel around the world. You've, been, you've done work in Japan. In Japan, in Italy, uh -huh. and in France. Okay. And, and in Costa Rica, Canada. I'm going back to Canada again. Uh huh. And you, you, you did some work north of Montreal? I, I did some work uh, in Mont Tremblant two years ago, uh -huh. and I'm going back to Boreal in August this year to make some more work. So, I mean, and, and there's, there's hardly anyone supporting you, right? You, you're, you're not being, you're it's, not it's, being funded? Let's like say it's tough sledding in summer. Huh? And maybe an artist as I am is, is no, it? No, I think it's true. I, I think it's fabulous that you do this and, and that you live your life this way, right? I mean, you're, you're, well, I, you're doing what you want to do. And, and, uh, but there, there isn't the New York State Foundation for the Arts or some local billionaire who th thinks you're, you're, you're a patron? Or when I lived in New York City, I got the New York State Foundation for the Arts Award, uh, uh, the New York State Council on the Arts Award, I got a Pollock Grant, I got, I got a, um, a Gottlieb, mm -hmm. and you have to be 20, working 20 years. But, but it seems to me from what you're saying that the grants are secondary to the work, that you want to do the work, and you're going to go do the work, and if, if you have the grant, so much the better. Oh, because that helps you go on. Oh, sure. But, the, oh, but when you get a grant, the next year you, you have no time to apply for the grant. And, and doing the grant is like doing your taxes. It's a painful experience. Applying for, yeah, I'm sure yeah, it is. They, they, want, they ask too many questions. And I, I just want to do my art and, and be a free What What kind person. of question don't you like? Well, they want, want me to account for how I live and how I travel and where do I go and, and how much this costs and that costs. And I don't want to be an accountant. I, I, when I pick my reeds, I don't count the reeds. Well, the reeds I aren't just, very expensive, are they? they I mean, <laughs> but they're my time. Yeah, well, they're your time, but yeah. When I made a piece on Meacock's Bay, I, I watched some kids canoe through it. And I used the, almost all the really strong, heavy reeds that I could pick in that area. And, and it, it becomes like a, a finite commodity. So when all, all the big ones are picked, then there's no more to use. So everything becomes precious anyhow. And I think my time is precious for making something. Oh, oh yeah. I, I agree. But you're saying that they're asking questions that you don't want to answer. You yeah. Know, you don't want to have to bother with. No. It's and, a, it, and, and I can certainly understand that having worked for government. Aha. Uh -huh. well, you know I, it. I, I mean, you know, you spend so much. You spend 38% of your time filling in time sheets about what you do with your time. That's what, that's what it was like working. And that's kind of the filling in the spaces that are not important yeah, in my yeah, mind. Okay, no, yes, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. As a matter of fact, I'm with you in all you're saying. Thanks. Now, you, you remarked, and I saw you a week ago, that you had Lyme disease. Yeah. And, uh, and that you were taking medication, you are taking antibiotics, and so you couldn't work in the sun because it didn't go with the antibiotics. And I'm looking at you here, and your nose is scraped. You know, lips, from your your yes. lips are scraped. So, so what is this? I mean, what is I've been making. I've been. I came out here in 1983 and made my first piece in the Hamptons. Right. And uh, I never got Lyme disease. I'm always in the in in the brush. And this year, I made a piece at Abington Art Center uh, for June 5th opening. I worked in the woods there. There were wild deer there. They were wonderful. They'd come up to me while I'm binding the work, repealing the bark, and, and this is a piece hanging in, 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 in the woods, and I got it, and I don't know why. And then I went to the hospital in... in yeah, but, but, but getting up early and working, and not, how to, and not so much how you get it, we all get it one time or another around here, but what I'm getting at is you were so committed to your work that you were ready to go out there and bake in the sun, even though you were, you were advised not to by your doctor. Well, I, I wore all the clothes and all the, I, I wore this horrible straw hat, and I hate to wear a hat. And, and I had all this cream uh -huh. on, and still it goes. And my hands were, the hands are burning. This is really a bad thing, this Lyme disease. It's the medicine. But, but yesterday, I had to have it done. OK. Now, you said to me just a few minutes ago, at the last minute, there is no night. Do you remember saying that? I uh, think I said, at the last minute, there's no more time. And, 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 and uh, I, you just have to do it. I, I cannot wait for tomorrow. Because the window is open now. And, and now is the time to do it. You mean the window, by the window you mean the, the wind, the, the tide, the, the shapes around you? Is, is that what you mean by, you have to catch that? 
Well, you, 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 you can you can say that, but kind of. Um, I with the Lyme disease, I was working slower because uh, the sun got too hot. I had to stop. Okay. I just became fatigued. But uh, so I would go to work early in the morning. And, and then stop at eight or nine or ten o'clock, and then I'd come back at six o'clock and work until dark. And, and and but at the last minute, it was all coming together, and I was anxious to see, to see my product. I wanted to see my art together. Is there anyone there to see it when you finish, or just you? No. So some people come on came along yesterday. A, a whole school group came by Did studying they know you were science. There? No, but they saw me and they came by. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm doing the last minute tying up, and there they are, and they ask a few questions. There was a good teacher. I forget her name, and we spoke about the reed, the Phragmite reed. And they said it's invasive because there's no need for it. It's invasive, but there's no use for it. But I find a need for it. That's why I use it, and that's why I can use it. But invasive, you're not hurting anything. I mean, you know, you're not, you're, you're not uh, polluting Northwest Harbor. No, no, not at all. I, I do bind it, and I use jute, uh, something I have to buy in the store, mm -hmm. and jute will rot. I will leave it there. It'll wash out, wash away in a few days when it falls down. Do you have to get any permits to do this? Um, no, I, I never asked for a permit. But once I was making a piece in Fresh Pond, and the police came and stopped me because they said you can't do it. So I had to go to Larry Penny, and he said, "Oh, it's just like making sandcastles. Uh, don't oh, bother." Oh, good for Larry. Thanks. I, and he yeah, was a yeah. smart guy to say that because yeah. he knew what I was doing. I'm working really sensitive to the environment. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not moving anything. I'm putting. Uh, reeds or, or grass in, in the water for a while and it, it, it breaks. It's, it's fragile. Mm -hmm. okay. Life is fragile too. All right. Now you've also said that um, Jack, about getting lost. I mean, you know, one always hears of artists having blocks or getting lost. Oh, we're talking about like Jackson thing. Pollock. And yeah. you said that Jackson Pollock got lost for a while and then found his way again, but that you never, that the important thing for the artist is never to get lost. lost. Now, what are you talking about? Right? All right, I, I went to see the, Metro, uh, the, the modern museum, the new modern that opened, and there's a nice section for Jackson Pollock. And I saw some early works of his, and he was in, impressed by um, Picasso. And then he finally got his way, and he was inspired. When I saw the movie, he was inspired. I know his inspiration when he was working. And then I saw some work after, 1954, 1955. And it was lost. Something he w he didn't know where to carry his technique. But isn't that just part of life, a part of work, where, where, where you know periodically one does get lost, or or one is searching, or one's involved in a process? How can you say you never get lost? Because I think uh, as an artist, you have to resolve. Uh, the, if you get lost, you resolve it into yourself to do it for yourself to carry it onward. So you have you have to do introspection. Does that make any sense to you? You have to look it at makes yourself. Sense to me, but it, it makes sense to me, but I don't see why it always works for you or anyone. Oh, I mean, oh, you, you know. oh, because sometimes when I'm playing with nature and I'm calculating something out, uh, I plot it out so it's almost perfect, and then I stretch the line, and the line, uh, like I think I use the, like origami, the fold just fall right. Sometimes you let nature take its course. Well, that's wonderful. Because I, I did, I, I did. Mean, when I went to, I went to Cape Cod and I did a spiral one year, uh, and, and I plotted it out, and the plot lines mathematically worked together. But when you really put the string around it, it, it was too jerky. But when I put the line of reeds around, they just bend perfectly, and that's what I, uh, I, I was looking for. I did not get lost. It, it guided me through. So I, that's why I try to be closer to nature when I'm working, to be really sensitive earth sensitive that John said in that article. Well, what are some of the, uh, yeah, yeah, earth sense, gosh, you know, the, the, the way people can write sometimes, earth sensitive, uh, ephemeral earthworks.